street genealogy librarian at the library here now. Um, really happy to have so many people come and be interested in history topics and uh, genealogy here. And let me know if you have recommendations of programs. There's a green form on the paper. There's also a program. And Jean, do you want to talk about it? Or? Oh, thank you. Okay. So, Jean Libby is here. And, uh, I, um, Honoring uh, Mary Brown, the wife of John Brown, Harper's Ferry, who's buried at Petronia Cemetery. Mm -hmm. And it's her 200th birthday on the 15th of April. So uh, if it's a nice day, uh, it's a Friday afternoon, and it's April 15th, and we've arranged for the, for the cemetery to just be there. They have a nice new little brick patio there, and it's a lovely place to be uh, and on a nice afternoon. And that's where Mary is buried. And there'll be some public officials and ministers and so forth. And certainly, if, if you'd like to come and honor Mary Brown, please. And she left some flyers on the table if you wanted to have the details. Tonight's talk is Alice Hare, early Santa Clara photographer and businesswoman. And it's going to be. Um, Lori Garcia is our Santa Clara City historian and very, very knowledgeable. She's an excellent writer and has written many books on different topics in Santa, on the Santa, Santa Clara history. And tonight she's going to present and tell us more about Alice Hare, a woman who was a photographer about 100 years ago, and we'll see some of her photographs. Thank you. And welcome. Well, welcome all to um, talk on Alice Hare, who I have to say in all honesty, I've always admired her and her work, but when I finished uh, researching her, I think I just became completely overawed at what this woman accomplished in such a very short period of time. So um, I hope it'll be enlightening and enjoying, and if I babble on too long, please feel free to throw things I don't mind. I've talked before the council a lot, so I'm used to that. And I put up to start with just this quotation from Peter Palmquist because it really fit, it really fit Alice Hare, that who is really very not known today by the general public. In 1901, advertisements started appearing in the business section of the Santa Clara News, unmounted views a special tape. This is Alice Hare from Clay 253, Residence 1075, Madison Street, Santa Clara. These advertisements announced this 42-year-old woman's transition from amateur to professional photographer. During the following decade, she would produce hundreds of pictures recounting the history of California and the various peoples that had contributed to its cultural makeup along with forming an impressive body of work that chronicled the geography and various aspects of the Santa Clara Valley, both historical and temp contemporary to her time. Today, she's recognized as an important early California female photographer now. Her work is held in several collections, ranging from universities to libraries to historical societies. Besides being an accomplished um, photographer, she was a proficient writer, producing numerous articles and poems on the history and geographic wonders of the region and state, an artist of no small merit, and a dedicated club woman, and ultimately a librarian. Who's Alice here? The oldest of seven children, Alice Iola, was born to John and Elizabeth Schnatterly on December 12, 1859, in the small town of New Geneva, Pennsylvania. Located on a bend of the east bank of the Monocahua and the river and the Creek River in southwestern Nicholson Township, Fayette County, um, the town and its streets slope up from the Monocahua and George's Creek to the bluff overlooking the river. 
New Geneva was officially laid out in 1797 by Albert Gallatin, um, and was a excuse me, who envisioned the town as a cultural and industrial center for refugees from the French Revolution. On her mother's side, Alice's family had lived in New Geneva since its beginnings, and it was here during her formative years that it is most likely her interest in history and love of art developed, influenced by her family background. At the time of Alice's birth, New Geneva had become a shipping point for southern Fayette County as well as parts of northern West Virginia, with coal and iron and glass production the main industries. In 1794, her great-grandfather great Adolphus Everhart had founded the first glass factory in New Geneva, and during the ensuing years, many family members had been involved in different aspects of glass making, including her own cousin, who was a very gifted glass blower. Also contributing to Alice's early exposure to the arts was her father. He was a stonemason by, stonemason by profession, but he also taught music for the village. In 1877, at age 23, Alice Schnatterly, married 21-year-old James Hare, a native of West Virginia, and in April 1880 gave birth to John, the first of the Hare's four sons. Three years later, in 1883, the Hare family left New Geneva and moved to Carlinville, Illinois, where two more sons were born, excuse me, Carson James and Robert. And then in 1895, the Hares left Illinois and they arrived in Santa Clara, California moving into a brand new home at 1075 Madison Street. Shortly after their arrival, their first fourth son, Henry, was born. John found work as a day laborer on the San Jose-Santa Clara trolley line, which was undergoing electrification at that time to replace the horse carts, with new tracks being laid into Santa Clara. Later, he got a boost in employment became a motor man on this trolley line, and he would work as a motor man on this trolley line for the whole time they lived in Santa Clara. Upon their arrival in California, his beauty and fertility must have inspired Alice here to take up photography for the first time, and as early as 1898, she was photographing scenes in Santa Clara. And here we're looking down Franklin Street, and you can see the trolley coming down Franklin Street. And then we turn in the other direction from this intersection and look down Main Street toward Plaza Park. And off in the corner with the spire is the Methodist Church. And that's where Liberty Towers is today for those who don't know. With these photographs, Alice Hare chronicled the turn of the century development in Santa Clara, including the double trapping of the trolley line, and following several years of campaigning for them by the Santa Clara Commercial League, the installation of electric street lights on Franklin Street. <coughs> if it was dark enough in here, you could see in the picture the lights are actually reflecting on the trolley tracks in there. Interestingly, by now, her eldest son, John, had taken up photography. By 1900, he would be working for several San Francisco newspapers, and by 1904, he was employed by the Chicago Daily Journal. Although little of Alice Hare's work is to be found before 1900, that year she did photograph a series of scenes of Chinatown in San Francisco and its various Chinese inhabitants depicting their culture. Here we have the different scenes that she had depicted there. These were made for Jesse Juliet Knox to illustrate her newest book. An accomplished writer and poet at the time, Jesse J. Knox was becoming known as a writer of Chinese customs. And like Alice, she was a member of the Methodist Episcopal Church and the San Jose Women's Club. As they shared a common interest in writing, it is likely that the two women had become acquainted through one if not both of these organizations. Also in 1900, 
One of Alice Harris' photographs won an honorable mention in the San Francisco Chronicle's Amateur Photography Contest and was published. The following year, she began to advertise her availability as a photographer in the Santa Clara News. Started in 1898 as a promotional magazine for the Southern Pacific Company, Sunset Magazine was designed to lure tourists onto the company trains. And so, in 1902, Alice Hare's work reached a much larger audience when Sunset featured it in two of their issues. In January, her photographs illustrated two articles on onion seed harvesting in the Santa Clara Valley. And in the December issue, her photograph, Beauty of Gazenwood Rosebush at Santa Clara, California on Christmas Day, 1901, appeared accompanying a poem that she had written along with her photograph of the Memorial Church at Stanford. Excuse me. The next year, she published This is the San Jose and the Santa Clara Valley, a collection of 21 photographs, including such subjects as prune farming, San Jose St. James Park, a gas and wood rosebush of a thousand blossoms, and the Santa Clara Mission. A review that appeared in the May 1903 San Francisco Call praised the book, stating, San Jose and the Santa Clara Valley is the title of a book containing a score or more views in and about San Jose and other points in the Santa Clara Valley, which in selection of subjects, clearness of showing, and artistic assembling reflects much credit on Mrs. Alice Hare of 1075 Madison Street, Santa Clara, who did the work. The pictures reproduced by Mrs. Hare's camera are beautiful and pleasing. Work of this character deserves encouragement. In 1903, Alice Hare also expanded the scope of items she offered by adding postcards to her repertoire. An article in the April 10th Evening News declared, excuse me, Santa Clara Mission Cards. With considerable enterprise, Mrs. Alice Hare of Santa Clara has published a souvenir postal card for Santa Clara, the first of its kind to be issued, says the Santa Clara News. It shows the mission and college buildings in color, as well as the old mission cross. The view is from a photograph taken by Alice Hare and is clear and well executed. Just the thing to send to friends back east. Inquiry has been made of local dealers by those who desired a souvenir of Santa Clara, but until Mrs. Hare invested her own money in the printing of these artistic cards, none have been procurable. The faculty of Santa Clara College are very much pleased with the cards and have given orders for quantities of them which will be distributed throughout the world. The success of this postcard quickly led to the publishing of additional views of the mission and cross. 1904 was a year of endless activity for this dynamic woman. Through arrangements made with the Santa Clara, San Jose Chamber of Commerce, Alice Hare traveled back east and displayed several of her photographs, primarily of California agriculture, in the California building at the Louisiana Purchase Exposition in St. Louis, informally known as the St. Louis Fair. This building cost $15,000 to construct and was described in reports of the ex on the exposition as a replica of the old Franciscan mission in Santa Barbara. A 140-foot structure featured arch cloisters that characterized the mission architecture. 
and the architectural mass, as you can see, was concentrated right in the middle of the structure with the two bell towers. Mm, excuse me. The pavilion contained no special exhibits, but its furnishings and decorations were entirely of California material and manufactured by California labor. And the assembly hall was an exhibition hall, and it was in this part of the building that the portraits of known Californians and California scenery, including among, included among those, were Alice Hare's photographs were exhibited. Responding to the popularity of the display and perhaps recognizing the potential of photography to lure more people to the West, Alice proclaimed, it is safe to say that California will have many visitors and settlers in the near future. And interestingly, historians generally emphasize the fair's long-lasting impact on intellectuals in the fields of history, art history, architecture, and anthropology. This most likely fueled Alice Hare's passion for the recording and illustrating of California history and its Spanish roots, and led to the creation of a booklet by her on the history of California mission. And in this letter to the library that she did, where she wrote what she was donating, she mentions this booklet that came here. It was very important to her and really started a whole different aspect of her life. In the book were several of the pictures. This is San Diego, San Luis Rey, San Gabriel, and Santa Barbara all taken at the time before any restoration has occurred. So those of you who've traveled to see missions today, this is the way they looked at the turn of the century before the 1920s when the big mission restoration movement started. We have, anyone who's ever been to San Antonio, this one really surprised me because I've only seen San Antonio restored. That's San Antonio, Soledad, which now stands as a regular mission, mission church. San Carlos Borromeo, which is Carmel, and San Juan Batista. So it's an incredible record that we have from that time because of her photography. While on her trip back east, she visited New Geneva, and with feelings perhaps intensified by the contrast of the landscape there and here in California, she wrote a critical description to friends in California of how devastated the Pennsylvania landscape had become because of all of the industrialization. And she stated in this letter, this is the coal and coke region. All valleys are full of coke works. At night, one can look on all sides and see the red glare of the sky from the coke ovens. The hills are crowned with the derricks of natural gas works, gas wells, from which county and towns get heat and light. In a few days, we are going to visit my sister. Her town is located on the forks of the Monongahela and Sheep Rivers, one of the few clean-looking places here. This would be the last time Alice Hare ever returned and visited New Geneva. 1904 also saw the founding of the Santa Clara Women's Club. When one month prior to the opening of the exposition in St. Louis, Alice Hare and 10 other women formed an organization they named the Santa Clara Women's Improvement Club. <clears throat> this organization was dedicated to civic improvement activities such as cleaning and maintaining local neighborhoods, restoring and renovating historic areas, gardening, planting trees, and eliminating unsightly elements such as billboards from public view. By October, Alice, who by now had returned from her trip back east, and the ladies, which now totaled 70 members. They were busy working on their first civic improvement project, the restoration and renovation of the Santa Clara Plaza, the town's oldest park. As those of you who attended the last lecture that Mary Ann and I gave, learned all about down at the Mission Library. The following years would see Alice involved in various fundraising festivals for this cause, such as the 1907 Street Fair where she was in charge of the Puritan booth with a spinning wheel and old-fashioned crane and cooking pot. 
That same year, the Santa Clara Commercial League printed a souvenir booklet aimed at promoting the town entitled Progressive Santa Clara. Many of the photographs appearing in it were taken by Alice Hare, and a section entitled Mrs. Alice Hare Photographer had the final, following description of her work. The most popular and skilled photographer and artist in this section is Mrs. Alice Hare, who is an artist of talent and attainment, and whose heart is in her work. Mrs. Hare is equipped and prepared to do all kinds of work pertaining to the photographic art. She has a fine collection of views to which she is constantly adding. That Mrs. Hare is familiar with picture making and outdoor views, one glance through this souvenir and some of her work would readily demonstrate. So it's basically, to interject here, um, only about five years since she first started taking her pictures and she's so far accomplished all of this and it's really just the start. In 1905, Sunset Magazine once again used Alice Hare's photographs, this time to illustrate the article Where Roses Grow on Trees, which was published in their January issue. Besides capturing the beauty around her in her photographs, when the great earthquake struck along the at San Andreas Fault on April 18, 1906, Alice Hare recorded the damage that it caused in Santa Clara and San Jose, providing a visual recordation of the devastation wreaked in the valley, including the horrific de destruction uh, at Agnew State Hospital. And these are three of her earthquake photos. We have the Methodist Church, the Santa Clara Hotel, and of course, Agnus. That same year, Eve Schillingsburg, the general passenger and freight agent of the Southern Pacific Railroad Company, had selected a number of her photographs, including some Santa Clara garden scenes for publication in The Road of a Thousand Wonders. Published the following year, this was a photographic essay which illustrated Southern Pacific's railroad line along the Pacific Coast. And the photographs that she took ranged all the way from San Diego on up the coast because this was the line that basically covers today the uh, Coast Starlight goes. Only now the Coast Starlight starts in LA. And there's a multitude. It's a wonderful little book, but if you ever get a chance to see it, it's really worth looking at these photographs. In late 1907, Alice attended a convention of the Photographers Association in California, where she displayed several of her photographs and received an award of merit. The following March, the magazine Camera Caft would publish Alice Harris' photograph, A Country Lane, a view taken of the trees on Brokaw Road near the railroad depot. This photograph had taken third place in their January competition for landscape pho photographs. Alice Hare's involvement with the Santa Clara Women's Club led to a more active interest in local history. And along with her interest in the arts led to eventual membership in other local and statewide clubs and organizations, such as the Outdoors Art League and the California Writers Club. Alice's love of beauty of nature led her joining the Semper led to her joining the Semper Virens Club, where she photographed Big Basin. Yeah, the Big Basin Redwood and the Governor's Camp in the Big Basin Reservation. Then, her passion for California history led her to joining the Santa Clara County Historical Society. While deeply involved in her photography, by now Alice was also actively pursuing her fervor for the documentation of historical sites. In 1907, her membership in the Santa Clara County Historical Society resulted in the marking of the second mission site in Santa Clara, which is now known as the site of the third mission, which is at the very end of Franklin Street um, and marked in the ground. This came about 
as at the May 28th meeting of the society, the subject discussed was the marking of historical societies. And it was stressed that the marking of such sites was one of the chief lines of endeavor for which the historical society was originally organized. Dr. Rockwell Hunt, principal of San Jose High School, and Alice Hare, having both spoken very earnestly on this subject, unquote, were appointed by the president of the society as a committee, along with Santa Clara College's father O'Sullivan, and their goal was to accomplish this activity to mark the site. They chose to mark the second Santa Clara mission site, and on November 19, 1907, 130 years from the founding of Mission Santa Clara, at a celebration which included several dignitaries, the marker was placed. Meanwhile, the Santa Clara Women's Club had joined the Federation of Women's Clubs in January 1905, and since that year, the club had had a history and landmarks committee, chaired by Alice Hare. <laughs> By 1908, she had been named the Federation of Women's Clubs Northern California Landmarks Chair. She was now responsible, among other duties, for facilitating the participation of the other 53 clubs in the San Francisco District in projects dedicated to the recordation of California history and landmarks. This she did by sending each club a broad outline of work items she had developed that she felt could be done even by the small clubs that had no historic sites in their area. As the Santa Clara County Historical Society's placement of a marker at the Santa Clara Mission site had been accomplished, as one of the Santa Clara Women's Club's projects for their celebration of History and Landmarks Day, Alice included the erection of signs that would direct people entering the town to its location. Also, as she had previously expressed to the Santa Clara County Historical Society when she stated that a land without monuments and historic landmarks is a land without a background, <coughs> Alice included in her November 1908 report to the district on the various club's activities what she described as the Santa Clara Women's Club crowning achievement of that year. The victory of the great struggle to save the child of its care, the park, from use as part of the town's waterworks. As described by Alice in her report, the battle had started when the town of Santa Clara decided to place a, quote, great, unsightly, dangerous tank of 100,000 gallons in the park, erected on still light supports amid the fine old trees. The report went on to further explain the issue and its outcome thusly. This is all the quote now from her report to Federation. Previous to the attempt to reclaim the old landmark, the women's club had been given full control of, by the same authorities who now sought to divert the use of the beautiful little park. To try to prevent the erection of this unsightly structure was only a natural course to pursue. Not only had the land been given by the early settlers and owners of the same for a park, but much work and hundreds of dollars in money had been expended on the same. Petition. The right of the commonest citizen was the first step. Members of the Women's Club circulated a petition, securing a large number of signers among the residents and businessmen and very respectfully submitted that as a protest, to no avail. Under Alice Hare's direction, quote, a committee from the Women's Club joined with the abutting property owners in an organization known as the Park Protective Club. One of the property owners carried the cause to the courts, securing a temporary injunction. All along through that half year, the Women's Club through its members helped support the case by searching the records for data, going on the witness stand, 
and interesting persons in attendance on the hearings to show the general attitude of the citizens to the proposed structure. A permanent injunction was issued by Judge Richards on July 3rd, 1908, saving our park or plaza, unmarred to the inhabitants forever as a common resting place, unquote. Dynamic little woman. <laughs> One of her duties as Federation Landmarks Chair was the responsibility for the placement of the Mission Bell signposts along the El Camino, marking that historic route. By January 1909, under her leadership, the Santa Clara Women's Club had started plans for the erection of one of the Mission Bells along the Alameda. To help raise funds for the Bell's placement, Alice Hare made presentations to various organizations, such as the San Jose Chamber of Commerce, who donated $35 for the project, quote, for the placement of Bells on the Alameda and Warm Springs to direct travelers to the Santa Clara Mission and to the old Mission San Jose. By May, the first of the Bell posts had arrived. And on July 3rd, 1909, a bell was placed at the intersection of the Alameda and Ray Street at a large ceremony led by Father Gleason, president of Santa Clara College. The Santa Clara Women's Club was represented by Mrs. Osborne, the club president, and Alice Hare, to whom the Sunday Mercury and Herald wrote, quote, is due great credit for untiring efforts in providing these most appropriate landmarks of the ancient highway of Mission Days. 57 bells had by now been placed in Orange, Los Angeles, and Ventura counties. This would be the first bell placed along the route in Northern California. By now, for a little over a decade, Alice Harris' photographs had documented the landscape and places of the Santa Clara Valley and the surrounding area, creating a record of the valley's growth and development. Its agricultural production, threshing sweet peas, a small army of Chinamen in lettuce fields, and Abram Block's Pear Orchard. Its homes, both large and small. And businesses. We have Abram Block's packing business. And when word went out that Alice Hare would be taking photographs of cherries being packed inside the Blue Rock Block Food Company packing house in 1904, all the women dressed with the occasion. <laughs> I love that picture. <laughs> Following her involvement with the Santa Clara Women's Club and an appointment as the Federation's Northern California Landmarks Chair, from photographs of adobe structures to willows, her photographs reflected her enthrallment with the history of Northern California. We have here one of the many adobe she photographed adobes all over. This happened to be an adobe near Albiso. This was what she entitled the oldest adobe in the valley, which is now the Santa Clara Women's Club. Colton Hall in Monterey, where the Constitutional Convention was held. Um, this is the Hotel Del Monte on the near Pacific Grove. This is New Almaden, the Guadalupe Mine at New Almaden. We have here the Lick Observatory and the Reflecting Pond at Lick Mill. This is the Lighthouse at Pigeon Point.
and this is our very own little SES club, which still exists in its current form on Lafayette by the El Camino, with the men bringing in the cow chantile, this men with cows in wagon, <laughs> bringing it in for their festival. Along with compiling a photographic record of hundreds of pictures, Alice had both written about and actively pursued the identification and preservation of the history and landscape in which she lived. In June 1910, Alice hosted a long party at her home for fellow members of the Short Story Club. A description of the occasion in the June 10th Sunday Mercury and Herald gives a glimpse of those things important in Alice Hare's personal life. The newspaper related, quote, Although Mrs. Hare's artistic little house was attractive within, it was more attractive in the yard, which has become a bower of fragrance and beauty by years of her loving care. The guests could not find words to express their admiration of the green lawn, the Japanese summer houses with their books, rugs, chairs, hammocks, and cushions, and of the luxuriant berry bushes which grew on trellises everywhere. The Short Story Club members sure found, soon found there was an even greater treat in store for them when, as the paper described, the ladies received a long-wished-for opportunity to examine the hundreds of exquisite photos for which Mrs. Harris received many prizes from high-class publications in the past. While looking at the photos, the subject of syndicating was explained to the satisfaction of all. And those who wished to use photos with their syndicated publications had no difficulty making selections of illustrations from the magnificent collection shown by Mrs. Hare. Within 12 months, Alice's time in Santa Clara had ended and the Hare family had left for Winton, California. No Warburton Pharmacy. Crap to keep showing the pictures, I am sorry. Short break time. Originally, California's Great Central Valley had been covered by massive wheat farms. However, by the turn of the century, the size of the land holdings had been reduced by the collapse of the grain economy and the introduction of irrigation. After 1904, the rate of subdivision and settlement into scattered towns and colonies had begun to accelerate, in particular along the railroad line that by now bisected the South Valley from the northern to the southern part of the state. Oops. Located in Merced County, the community of Witten, formerly Merced County number one, Merced County number two, and Wingfield, would be founded along the Santa, Santa, excuse me, Santa Fe Railroad Line. By June 1911, the Cooperative Land and Trust Company had established a land office in Winton and were doing a booming business with settlers coming in from all over. Alice and James Hare had come early in 1911 to look over the land and became the first people to ask for reservations for a plot of land to be theirs as soon as the plots would be surveyed. By May, the survey of the land was completed, and shortly thereafter, the Harris had arrived. Here, James, now retired from his job as a motorman on the San Jose Santa Clara Street Railroad, it's a trolley line, and Alice became the second family to actually purchase a plot and move to Winton. An early colonist from the Santa Clara Valley who arrived in the evening described the scene that would have greeted these new settlers as follows. Arrived from San Jose, toiling up Winton Way on a straw road. A single light shone from a lonely shack. By day, the nearest tree was a mile away. Bare, sandy, unbroken stretches met the eye except for canals and laterals being built. 
So quite a complete change when you picture what her scenery had been here, what she'd been doing, that now she is basically in this somewhat wasteland in the middle of the Central Valley. In November that year, over 200 new settlers gathered together to celebrate their first Thanksgiving in Winton at a dinner planned by the Cooperative Land Trust and five ladies, among whom were Alice Hare and Jenny Wilkinson, her friend. The Wilkinsons were friends of the Hares from Santa Clara, where Samuel Wilkinson had been employed for 23 years as a conductor on the San Jose and Santa Clara trolley line. In fact, their son Arthur was the same age as Connor here and had come to Winton at the same time as the Harris had with his mother. Um, in April 1912, uh, they would be joined by Samuel following his retirement. In a talk given during the program which followed the dinner, Alice Harris spoke about the need for a school district stating there were 48 children not attending school and stressed the need for trees as the best way to ornament the home, the street, and the roadside. Having photographed this first Thanksgiving, in February of the following year, she photographed the bell dedication that marked the founding of Wynton's first church. Thus, she recorded the historic moments of Winton's beginnings. Later that year, she exhibited her photographs, paintings, and pastels at a fair celebrating Winton's founding. Alice quickly became involved in establishing many of Winton's first institutions and participated in many community activities. In February 1912, Alice Hare proposed that the women of the town organized as a section of the Winton Improvement Club, which up till then had been mostly headed by men. Shortly after her proposal, the women's section was formed, and Alice was appointed chair of the Arbor Day Committee, which immediately campaigned for the planting of trees. She was also appointed chair of the committee formed to name the new streets laid out in Winton, which she then gave the names of trees. With the establishment of Winton's first post office in October 1912, there was a large celebration the settlers called Gala Day, for which Alice Hare wrote a Winton song to be sung to the tune of Yankee Doodle Dandy. Welcome to Winton Day to gaily celebrate it. For Uncle Sam's our guest today. Hurrah for Winton. Hurrah, hooray. One year ago, we bought our lands and settled in the follow, built our homes and planted, plowed the lands and planted sweet potato. I love that song. I'm not singing it for you. That could have been very enjoyable. In addition, Alice wrote articles such as Winton Wants Rural Outdoor Adornment. We can all guess that must mean trees. Along with poems and articles for various Winton events. You're going to see a big lack of pictures now. Because even though she now lived in Winton, Alice maintained her ties with friends in Santa Clara and her membership in the Women's Club, Short Story Club, and other organizations, exchanging visits and letters, including stories and poems she had written on the area, which she now called home. In July 1912, when tragedy struck the Hare family, the story was fully covered by the Sunday Mercury and Herald in San Jose, entitled, J. Ellsworth Hare Passes Away in City of St. Joseph, Michigan. Son of Mr. and Mrs. Hare will be buried at Old Home in East. The article related the untimely death of their eldest son, John, at age 32. Calling him one of the best known newspaper men in the country and noting he had made a specialty of press photography working for some of the biggest dailies in the United States, the story included the telegram that Mr. Hutchins, the managing editor of the Chicago Journal, had sent to Mrs. to Mrs. Hare, journalist, notifying Alice of her son's death, and it included a message from her to her friends in the Santa Clara area. In her heartfelt message, Alice wrote, 
For the information of friends, we'll say that we had no particulars as yet. We have willed instructions to the manager of the Chicago Journal to have the remains sent to our old home in Illinois. Their kind friends will do for us the last that can be done for his mortal frame, give it burial besides his brother Robert. His boy him home we have chosen as the one most satisfying to our aching hearts as his long last resting place. His strenuous labors mid the hurrying throngs and the city's walls being finished, there to rest in the quiet churchyard undisturbed, while his spirit climbs to yonder world to make new growth unhampered by the things of below. Our son Carson is spending his college vacation at the ranch near Winton, helping his father and his kind companionship is a great comfort to us through our hours of grief. We have also the sympathy of the friends of our new home. Neither have our Santa Clara friends neglected to offer their heartfelt expressions of sorrow in our behalf, which are deeply appreciated. Respectfully yours, Mrs. Alice Hare. In May 1912, the county librarian had visited Winton and recommended to the county that a library be established there. Within three months, 80 books and some magazines had been gathered, and they were deposited at Alice Hare's studio. She held book readings at her home and became the area's first librarian in charge of the library until the Hare family moved away in 1918. Alice Hare was also instrumental in the establishment of the community's first grammar school in its first school district. In December 1912, the construction of the new school building in Winton was finished, and it's interesting to note that the architect was Alice Hare's son, Carson. Designed along the lines of mission-style architecture, a new art newspaper article stated that the building was a credit to the young man as well as the people of Winton. In, 1904, in 1914, Alice and James both participated in what be, by then had become the annual Winton Gala Day, and Alice once again had a quote, fine display of pictures at the exhibit hall, including some paintings and some fine camera pictures, some that she had exhibited in Santa Clara. James showed two good Jersey heifers that evening at a short music program under the direction of Alice and two other women. James played his trombone. By now, Alice Hare was writing with the fervor she had previously spent on photography. Like her photographs, her short stories and poems expressed her love of the beauty of nature. In November that year, her poem, Autumn Time, which described the ending of summer in the Central Valley, was printed in the November 1st, 1914 issue of the Sunday Mercury Herald. Although Alice had set up a photographic studio in her new home, after 1912, there is a highly significant decline in her photography. When she made a brief visit to Santa Clara in 1913, a story in the Santa Clara News referred to her as Mrs. Alice Hare, prominent club woman and writer. While it is believed that this may have been the result of her demanding involvement in the establishment of several of Witten's first institutions, her participation in many community activities and her interest in Winton education, which distracted her from photographs, as she had been just as involved in similar activities in Santa Clara, while taking hundreds of photographs, one cannot help but wonder if John's death did not have the greatest influence on her declining passion for photography. In 1918, the Hares moved to Concord, California. Two years later, James passed away. For a brief while, Alice continued to reside in Concord and then moved to Oakland. In 1924, she moved to Berkeley. Here, Alice remained a librarian and gave evening readings at patrons' homes. For two years, she attended classes on short story reading, writing at Berkeley High School, writing romance and adventure stories, some of which she hoped would become Hollywood screenplays. She also took a course on biography and began to compose her own autobiography. 
When Alice, Her Alice Iola Hare died on July 20th, 1942, her son Carson was her only surviving relative, and he now lived in their old home in Illinois. Alice Hare did not seem to have benefited financially from her writing or photography as she died in testate. There was not even enough money to pay for a tombstone to mark her grave at Mountain View Cemetery in Oakland. Her obituary in the Berkeley Daily Gazette makes no mention of her phot photographic work, lists her as a hair writer. However, California benefited from her photography as she left an unparalleled legacy to the people of the state with her photographs that captured elements of its history and beauty, most of which no longer exist. It has been said, quote, much of California's agricultural and architectural heritage would truly be lost without Alice Hare, Alice Iola Hare's photography. And for Alice Hare personally, well, my comment, as she wrote, I would rather sit on a pumpkin and have it all to myself than to be crowded on a velvet cushion. Thank you. That's Alice Hare. I hope you enjoyed. I had a hard time with everything she did, and I had told Mary I ended up with over 318 folders in my Alice Hare file trying to decide what pictures to choose, what to tell about what she was doing or what reward she got. So I wanted to give you more of a complete picture of her. Um, her pictures are everywhere. It's the most incredible thing I've ever seen that this woman who really started in her early 40s accomplished in such a short period of time. And why she left and went to Winton, nobody knows. There's no record of why. But it was a drastic change, and it really changed her life photography-wise. But it certainly did not change the type of person she was based on everything she suddenly was doing over there. Um, just this very, very dynamic woman. And one of the most interesting things that I found in researching is there is no record of any of her paintings or her pastels. A lot written about how good they were, but nobody has ever seen any of them. They don't seem to exist anywhere that anybody knows. So there is a challenge for somebody to take up to go find them. Yes? Uh, did her sons have any children? I mean, were there any, were there any grandchildren? Um, I honestly don't know. All I know is that the time she died, I know that her first two sons, the oldest ones, had died because when John died, he was then buried next to his brother. Um, whatever happened to the one that was born here, he disappears off of the radar screen completely. Uh, he's on the 1900 census. He's not on the 1910 census. And he still would have been living at home, but he still would have been young at that point. And so the only record seems to be Carson. And I did try to find Carson back in Illinois, and I couldn't find any record of him. So it's a very interesting thing as to what happened to the rest of the family. But I do know by the time she died, there was just the one son left. And the others had not married, obviously, to a more young, and James, uh, John did not marry. So yeah, somewhere, somewhere in some archive, someday, somebody's going to find a whole bunch of drawings that are made. And then she had her studio that was set up there, but she didn't really ever use it. I had uh, the real great opportunity of meeting several years ago now with two ladies who have written the Winton history. And um, actually, I met them because they wanted to get a marker for the 100th anniversary, and Winsett County said, well, 
you're just in the county and we don't have money for that if you want to go to Winton. So I hooked him up with the clampers who looked for the markers they got a marker. But her house there still exists. Because they took me to show the house and she was telling me a lot about <coughs> what she had done there, which was so comparable. She's looked upon there very much as she's looked upon here. But there she's not looked at as a photographer. She looked at as a person who started this and made the streets. All these other things. But it's interesting. She still remembered. And both her houses still stand. Well, thank you again for coming.